sun and yeah. head, like show all your friends. Show, yeah, like so, that's fine. Yeah, you're <laughs> in different places. Which yeah, comfortable with you're not something you're yeah. comfortable with. I'm not. So like a way to like make that person relate to it is like maybe like bring up something else that like they feel really vulnerable about. Like maybe yeah. like you know how would you feel if 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 I told you or if you told me a secret and I told all my friends. Yeah, or, like, exactly. Story about you like shitting your pants or something, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then maybe like it'll get them to understand. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, there are things that I don't want you to share with your friends. And if that's yeah. about your nudes, then. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but yeah, it's definitely, I think like the consent conversation is definitely something we all need. Like mm -hmm. all, all of us, um, yeah. we all grew up with like very, very little consent talk. So mm -hmm. zero. yeah, very, very little to zero. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And, and it's not funny, but it's, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> like you have to laugh because it's so sad. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Yeah. I mean, and like I said, I, I only recently realized like how often I have sent guys nudes without asking first. And I'm, yo! <laughs> and so, and I mean, so, you realize like I still don't ask. So, yeah, yeah. I probably should. I should yeah, it's it's just one of those things. It's like, how do we expect to shift the conversation? I mean, my phone is like propped up because my phone, my uh, <laughs> my stand is in the other room. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's like we really do have to start having these conversations and asking before we just do it. And I think that you know, especially being a sex worker, I don't even you know, I've just become accustomed to the fact that people want yeah. to see you naked, and you know, changing the way that I think about consent especially you know even in terms of me with other people it, it's just it's been life-changing also like something you just mentioned right now that like really I think is important is like okay like for sure I think we can objectively like say that like 99% of the time if like you know, we send someone, we ask someone if they want a nude, they'll probably say yes. Say yes. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like what you said is like, how can we expect them to start acting that way toward us if mm -hmm. like, we are not doing the same in return? And then if anything, it, it just, that conversation just needs to be normalized. Like, yeah, you know, it's yeah. like, so... Um, okay, you, you've mentioned multiple times um, that you have relationships with multiple people, which is great, because our next question is, I'm in love with two people. How do I decide which one is right for me? Um, That's such a great question. Um, I think it's it depends on the type of relationships you want. And, I you know, we've been really programmed for monogamy from birth you know it's like we are from the time we come out the womb we are always like everybody's telling it's like the fairy tales it's like you're gonna meet that one person that it's gonna be happily ever after and that's how we grow up but I mentioned not society is designed that way you marry yeah. one you, put you marry one person tax forms like mm -hmm. the built for one-on-one -on -one relationships. Yeah. And and that's not necessarily the case. I mean, I think that the divorce rate shows us that monogamy, while it's the standard, doesn't necessarily work. <laughs> so it's like not everybody is pro is is made for monogamy. I think that monogamy is a choice. Yeah. But it's not necessarily like it's it's not something that everyone is wired for. And I think that, you know, for me, you know, again, it goes back to consent, you know, and it goes back to like, creating you you get you get to create the types of relationships you want, you get to, but you have to be honest and transparent with your partners. And for me, like, I believe in telling people from the very beginning that I'm not interested in monogamy, not because I don't think that I you know, not that I, you know, I like consistency. But I also believe that 
I have the ability to love more than one person. Like I, you know, the very first book I ever read on um, on ethical non monogamy was The Ethical Slut back in the the nineties. I, you know, I which this book has been around for over twenty five years, you know, more than twenty five years. At the time, it was been around for twenty five years, and the thing that stood out to me the most was that when you have more than one child, you love them equally yet differently. Or if you have more than one sibling, you love them equally yet differently. And, and, and that doesn't change, it doesn't change how much you love them. And yeah. so, and it's like, it was like, well, why, if you can do that for other, for your non-intimate relationships or your non-sexual relationships, why does that have to change just because you're in a relationship with someone? And I was like, <laughs> Yeah. Oh my, oh my God. Like, yeah, absolutely. And so I've been really trying to live my life in a way where I'm open. Like in the past, I've had relationships with people where I, I was open about the fact that yes, I'm bisexual. I don't use my bisexuality as an excuse to cheat. You know, I do, you know, I primarily date men, but I do want to be able to see other people. And where I've made a mistake in the past was bending to monogamy because my partner wanted that as opposed to being you know like really being the person that I am and so now at this stage in my life I've been single for five years I'm very and and also like I was a big cheater <laughs> so <laughs> like I was like I was like yeah I, I was like talking this I was like you know a really good game I'm ethically I'm monogamous and really I was like you know monogamous ish and then you know if something popped up that I really wanted to do I would just do what the fuck I wanted to do and so at this stage in my life I'm in and I broke a lot of hearts by doing that you know and so I and and, and a few that didn't know that they were cheated on you know and it took me like being cheated on and being really hurt really, really badly to realize that I wasn't living up to who I was as who I said I was. And so now I'm at this point where I'm like, yeah, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not monogamous. Like I want to be in polyamorous relationships. Like I want to be able to date multiple people. I want to be able to fall in love with multiple people. And I want to date partners who are open to the same thing. And so both of my partners also have other partners. And it's really important to me that they are honest with their partners. And also just like, you know, in terms of my sexual health, I want to know, like, if you are seeing other people, then I, I need to know, right? Because the statistics show that for that most women tend to stop using safer sex practices in their relationships after three or four months if they think they're in a monogamous relationship. And so if your partners are sleeping with other people or dating, dating other people, you need to know so that you can make informed decisions about your sexual health. And so for me, it's like now I'm really happy. Like the, the one of the people that I'm dating, I've known for 10 years, the other person I'm dating, we, we from the very beginning, it was like, so are you seeing other people? Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing other people too. And that allowed us to open a, a dialogue and a conversation about when I'm seeing my other partners, when are you seeing your other partners? Are we, you know, can we, you know, and there's, there's respect and it allows for us to not have insecurities about the time that we're not spending together. Um, and so I think that we have to, you know, we just have to normalize being honest about our needs so that, and our desires so that our partners can, you know, can, can also get what they're, what they're looking for. And remembering that not every person that we date is, is meant to be a life partner. And, you know, the one thing that's constant is change. And so when we allow ourselves to be comfortable with the fact that, you know, some relationships are going to end, you know, not every relationship is going to last forever, then, then we can, we can allow ourselves to because because the thing about the thing about like, not being honest and cheating on your partners is selfishness, right? 
it's and and that's what it's really because you're afraid of losing the other partner you're afraid that somebody would not want to be with you if they knew that you were also seeing other people or doing anything else that that they didn't agree with and so we ultimately need need to be true to ourselves and honor our our own self-worth and our self-love and our self-compassion and our own desires and wants and needs and be and be give other people the opportunity to not be with you if they don't want to you know and yeah and, <laughs> and yeah so like i think i definitely think the takeaway here is like if you are in love with two people like rather than ra maybe like rather than the question being like how do you decide which one is right like maybe the yeah. question like like decide if you are a monogamous person or not yeah and explore the options of maybe perhaps you're not yeah um, you mentioned the 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 book the ethical slut um yeah. another one i think that's like great on monogamy is sex at dawn by christopher yeah. ryan mm -hmm. I love and that book it's kind of like it's it's not necessarily like pro or anti-monogamy it's just about like the history of monogamy and like yeah. why come to be a monogamous people yeah um, just like and oh no. and and you know like i chose monogamy like i it doesn't mean, I think, like, in different stages of your life, you don't have to be one or the other, like, mm -hmm. things change. Um, and I don't think, like, one is necessarily better than the other. But, for yeah. sure, like, we do live in a society that frowns upon anything aside from monogamy, and, like, that needs to go. Yeah, absolutely. And, and also, Tristan Terramino wrote a really great book, Opening Up, about um, non-monogamy also, which is really great. Kristen Terramino, love her. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's, it's definitely, there's stuff out there. Like you should definitely research and see, like maybe you're not a monogamous person and that's fine. Yeah. yeah or maybe absolutely. You are. And like, you know, like it's, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that is our advice on that one. Figure out if you're a monogamous person. From, so the, from, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> everyone in that scenario deserves that. Absolutely. Um, okay. Uh, oh, here's, I promised I would answer this earlier. Uh, I get asked a lot about the best sex proof makeup. Uh, specifically, I was being asked about eyeliner and lip gloss and I have brands that I really like. Um, and you know what? Like I, I, I almost hate to say this. Like my favorite eyeliner is from a company that I'm not like crazy about in general. Like I just don't, I don't know, the rest of their makeup like doesn't look great on me, but I really like this MAC eyeliner um, that I've been using mm -hmm. for a couple of years. It's called Brush Stroke 24 Hour Liner. Mm. This mm. does not move. It's so good. Um, it doesn't run, it doesn't get oily, it doesn't come off, like you can sleep in it and it stays on. I, <laughs> I love this stuff. I, I need that in my life. It's I, really good. And it's my um, and then for lip gloss, I'm really loving, as you can see, I've like used basically all of it. <laughs> the glossy. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what this is called. It's just like, I get the red one, but it's clear and it's super sticky. It's oh, like Glossier. Glossy. Yeah. yeah. My, so I, fa my favorite lip gloss currently is Stella. I love, love, love their lip gloss. The only thing is that it's matte, and I'm not particularly crazy about matte lipsticks. I feel like it, or lip glosses, I feel like it makes my lips look dry, so I always add, like, a gloss on top of it. But but it stays forever. <laughs> I will say the matte stuff, though, is really good for porn, for shooting, for fun. Yeah. Like, that stuff really, like, it stays on. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> long <laughs> yeah yeah I actually I did I did a shoot in the shower yesterday and I my my mascara ran because I didn't have on really great mascara and I didn't put on any lashes because I was like it was a last minute thing but my lipstick stayed for the whole the whole time <laughs> <laughs> 
on. <laughs> yeah, I put a mask. I put this like really cute wire mask on and I was like, I had on like this sheer top with a sheer black top with polka dots and I had on this like wire mask because I knew I was like my make my my mascara is gonna run but my lips were perfect in the shower. I, I I don't know like I like that runny mascara look like I me too hot. yeah like, me too especially when you're tear your eyes are tearing because yeah like you're like gagging because you're gagging yeah I think it's hot me too. Um, I actually don't really wear mascara because I just like I'm perpetually in fake lashes and I just don't yeah. put on over them. But um, I I like that look. I think it's hot. So. Me too. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, this is the final question of today, and it's a relationship question. And this question comes from someone who is dating someone in porn, which I think is happening more and more now. Yeah. Um, it, maybe not even in the traditional sense of like you and I thinking like mainstream mm -hmm. video porn, but especially since COVID, a lot of people are shooting porn now, whether it's yeah. sub, OnlyFans, many vids, whatever. Yeah. They're doing their own stuff. So, um, you know, a lot of people are doing it as a second job or until like mm -hmm. they're. Until they find a job. Yeah. <laughs> um, which yeah. by you think is that is that good or bad for us um i think it's i think it's good because it allows the company it, it i think it's i think it's good for us i think it's good for us because there are the more people normalize the you know just sex work in general the better it's going to be for you know us legislatively you know and also i think that yeah i mean i I think it's I think it's good for us overall. And also I think that it takes a lot of the power away from the studios mm -hmm. and it puts the power in the hands of the creators because traditionally, you know, there's only and you know this, it's like only a very small percentage of performers make the most you know, make a lot of money or are consistent working and unfortunately you know the stigma and the discrimination it's like once you do it it's so and allowing people to really be able to create content and own the content themselves and have control over the way that they present their image and and it allows people to make more money and also be able to 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 elongate their career like it's like there's there's no like limited career anymore like I think about all the performers who you know it used to be the lifespan of performers was like a year and you know or two and then it was like average, six months and it's what the average porn career used to be like before all these yeah. platforms was less yeah. than less than a year and now people actually have the opportunity to make money as long as they want to and that's really important when you consider that there's so much discrimination against sex workers, especially in traditional employment. And it's really hard for people to find a job, period. So, you know, it's like, I mean, think about like, you know, last year there were 33 million people unemployed. There's only so many companies. So it's, it's like, I think 